American Black Journal and Detroit Public Television extend our sympathy to the family of Detroit Lions great Mel Farr. The football legend and entrepreneur passed away last week at the age of 70. Farr played seven seasons for the Lions. After his football career, he built an auto dealership that became the country's largest black-owned business. Farr was among the Detroiters selected for the National African American History Makers Archive. He joined fellow honorees Martha Reeves and George Shirley here on American Black Journal last year. The Library of Congress is now the permanent home for a collection of thousands of videotaped interviews detailing the black experience. The archive is called the History Makers, and it's the largest African-American oral history video collection in the country. The first-person accounts are from well-known and unsung African-Americans who talk about their struggles, dreams, and achievements. I'm pleased to welcome three of those history makers to American Black Journal. Entrepreneur and former football star Mel Farr, Motown legend Martha Reeves, and renowned tenor and educator George Shirley. Thanks for being here. This is probably the most powerful, star-studded uh, cast I've had on this show. Uh, I grew up uh, sort of idolizing and listening and watching all of you, so uh, it's a real honor to, for me to have you here on American Black Journal. Well, Thank a, you for it's inviting me. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about the project. I mean, that's that's something that uh, you're giving these oral histories to the Library of Congress. Well, you know, uh, Juliana, uh, um, uh, several years ago, um, you know, thought of the idea of, uh -huh. uh, of archiving uh, the uh, the events of uh, of, of uh, Black History Makers, you know, oh, yeah. and uh, and she's done a great, great job, I, I tell you, of, of getting that information and, and archiving it so that uh, uh, our grandkids and grandkids uh, uh, could uh, uh, to to see uh, what uh, you know we've done, and, right? Uh, and uh, so I think that that's uh, very important. Uh, what she's done, and uh, we really, ne really need to take our hat off to her. Right, right. And you guys are also going to to schools to talk to to young kids about this stuff, just to remind people where we all come from, right? Yes, uh, my yeah. visit to the Duke Ellington School of Performing Arts was really exciting. Uh, some of his uh, relatives are actually there. Some of his oh, is that right? Yeah, as uh, as yes. uh, students, as students, really? and uh, it gave me an, a, a, a quite a, a concert very, very talented babies being trained in the right way. Uh, I always give advice to if, if you want to be in this business or to excel in it, uh, learn from professors, from uh, learned professors, right. uh, similar to the one sitting to my right, right. who was my teacher <laughs> in high school. Oh, is that uh, right? Yes. I did not know yes. that. I'm very, very happy to be here to, uh, to express how important uh, History Makers is. Uh, Juliana Richardson uh, has uh, given me the uh, privilege of seeing a lot of her co uh, concerts and her uh, exposés of different scientists. And right. I learned a lot of things about our history. You got to know where you've been in order to know where you're going. Sure. And she's making a wonderful contribution to the world with her uh, her uh, videotaped right. uh, interviews. Yeah. yeah. This uh, collection is not only for us, it's for everyone yeah. here in this country and in the world because this is available to anybody to who anybody. can tap into it. Sure. It's extremely important, uh, not only for our people, but for others to know not only what those of us who've had the opportunity to perform and be in front of the public uh, on the world stages, but also to know what people have contributed over the years who don't make the media, who don't get into the headlines. Right, right. These are people who doctors, lawyers, business persons, uh, youngsters need to know that there's a wide range of possibility for sure. it. I have, over the past three or four years, uh, visited public schools, elementary schools in Ann Arbor, where I live. And, you know, children are the hardest audiences <laughs> in the world, you know. But they are eager. They're sponges. They're eager to hear what you have to say. And the message always is, stay in school. Don't let anyone talk you out of fulfilling, completing your education. What you want to do and, and your dreams. Because there are, there, there are tremendous influences outside yeah. that will tell you, oh, you don't need to go to school. You, you can make it on your own. And that's not the message that young people need to hear. Yeah. It's hard work. It's <laughs> frustrating. But it pays big dividends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it strikes me that all three of you uh, uh, came of age uh, at a time when 
it was really different, uh, especially for African Americans in terms of opportunity. And I'm not sure uh, that, that young people today quite appreciate the, the, the difference and, and, and how difficult it could be. Yeah, you know, for the last three years, uh, I have uh, gone to King High School uh -huh. and uh, we have the, uh, the freshmen uh, come to the, uh, to the uh, audience, it's the audience there. And uh, one of the things that I talk to them about is, and which I think is the most important thing you can do is, is set goals. You know, you've got to have some goals. You know, right. If you don't have any goals, uh, you don't know in what direction you're going to go, you know. So, so uh, you know, I talk to them about goal setting, uh -huh. you know, because I think at that age, you know, right. goal setting is so, so very important uh, in uh, what, what they're going to, to be because if you don't set any goals, uh, then you are um, um, apt to uh, go to the, the, the wrong direction. Sure, you know, sure. your goals is the thing that that keeps you on a, on a straight and narrow. You know, and so I, I think it's just great that she, uh, Juliana, has uh, with the history makers have have gotten us uh, to come uh, back and go into the, the the high schools and, and talk to the kids about yeah. uh, about uh, their education and uh, and about uh, obtaining you know those goals in life. Because and, you know I say uh, you know what is happiness. You know, it's, it's happiness eating and drinking and being married and everything is going my way with the happiness of conflict and tension. But happiness is, is as you as you accomplish your goals and objectives in life, the happier you are. So right. most important thing, if you're going to, you know, you, you know, and I say, first thing I say is, how many out here want to be sad? <laughs> nobody. 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 Right? nobody, nobody. Right? How many wants to be happy? <laughs> Everybody. I say, hey, so hey, this is a way that you can, you, what you right. can do in order to achieve happiness. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you started uh, the dealership uh, after your football career, I imagine, though, that, that, that uh, being African American, that was something that probably some people said, hey, you know what, you can't do this. Well, you know, it's, it's amazing how things happen, you know. Uh, <laughs> my father uh, was a uh, car dealer uh -huh. in Beaumont, Texas, uh -huh. you know? and uh, he was a used car dealer. Uh, so uh, my brother and my father and I, we used to uh, go to the junkyard, get cars and fix them up and sell them, all right? right. And so I, ironically, uh, you know, I, I get drafted by the Detroit Lions, I come here, and uh, boy, there was a ride here, all right? And at that time, Henry Ford the second said, you know what, we're going to make automobile agencies available to African Americans. To African Americans, right. And so I said, wow, you know, that's the brother of the guy who owns the Lions. Right? <laughs> so you know what I did uh, is I went to uh, and got a job at Ford Motor Company. And for seven years, I worked at Ford Motor Company to, to learn the, the so retail automotive business. business. Yeah. And so when I uh, quit playing football, boom, I stepped right into uh, to business right. and grew the largest African American business in the country. Yeah, yeah. And, and thinking about that sort of second act, I think, is something that... Uh, that I can feel all three of you have done. I mean, you with the dealership, of course, uh, Councilwoman Reeves, you Absolutely. went into politics. That after, was also uh, one of the first artists on, on um, Motown to go on the Motown Review. Right, that's right. They, that's they grouped right. Uh, at least 12 acts on the 12 piece band, put us on a broken down trailway, and had us tour the, the United States. And I've seen uh, segregated audiences but become intimate at yeah. the end of a show, hugging and kissing people who they wouldn't speak to prior to <laughs> right. the show starting. Right. Uh, having uh, been gr growing up in the church, having my, at, at age of three at my grandfather's church, win candy with my two older brothers singing gospel, and having that as roots in my life, uh, knowing that uh, prayer, answered prayer, is the result of, uh, I'm the result of a product of good teachers, but answered prayer. Right. Yes, having faith, knowing that uh, it's God's talent, and uh, he's our director. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, Mr. Shirley, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, always struck at uh, uh, black classical musicians uh, and, and the sort of struggle that they must uh, encounter just in terms of uh, surprise, really, that, 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 uh, that, they, that they do that. It's just not something uh, that, that I think a lot of people think of when they think of African-American artists. Well, one of the things that I, I'm most proud of is the fact that I've been able, I've been blessed with the opportunity to make a career uh, and become successful in doing something that most people didn't expect me to do. Right. And that's God's doing. Mm -hmm. Because when I was in school in Detroit, uh -huh. you couldn't drag me to an opera. Yeah. <laughs> My, you know, spirituals, growing up in the church, uh, art songs, yes, I loved uh, symphonic music, but yeah. I thought opera was pretty silly. Yeah. But it was when I was in the army that someone said, you know, you can, you have the stuff to become an opera singer. So I thought, well, since someone's said that who's been there and done it, I didn't want to come back to Detroit to resume my teaching career, which was interrupted by the military draft. By the military, sure. Uh, I didn't want to come back without taking the chance. I thought, well, 
if I come back and resume teaching and I have a really talented student who shows career potential, well, I'm not going to tell them about the business. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. So I gave myself two years to find out about it, <laughs> and it went further than I thought, yeah, which right. simply means for me that when I walked out on stage this little company up in Woodstock, New York, to make my debut in Deflator Mouse, I knew I was doing what I was born to do. Yeah. yeah. So God guides. Um, it's interesting <clears throat> that Mel talks about goal setting. Uh -huh. Two of the disciplines in education that have come under tremendous attack and are still under attack are music uh, uh, and uh, sports. Right. Sports and arts, uh, that's right. But both of, both of which are about goal setting. Yeah. Uh, the football player, you have to have a goal in <laughs> mind when you get the ball. Right. And you learn how to do what you need to do to get there and achieve that goal. Yeah. Same with music, you have a performance to give and you have to work to do it. And these are disciplines that teach young people how to pursue their goals. And unfortunately, people who are responsible for well, education these days don't right? understand that it's not so much about becoming a professional football player, professional musician, it's about training the, the brain the mind to, uh, to think in certain right, ways. And that discipline. I, uh, Councilman, I know you do a lot of work uh, with young people sort of encouraging uh, arts education and things like that. And I let them know that I'm just a product of good teachers. Had I not had a commercial course in high school, I could never have made it at Motown because yeah. I was a secretary for nine months before I went on tour right. because I had the skills, because I could answer a phone properly, yeah. and because I knew how to, the protocol of an office procedure. So it's all about getting in where you fit in. But if you have your education, you can do all things. Yeah. So now you said that uh, he was your teacher yes. in high school. Yes. Where, 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 where was Miller. it? At Miller. At, at Miller High School. Yes. Miller High school. I was there for wow. two years, and then they made it a, a junior high and sent us to Northeastern High School, where right. I learned to sing opera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you Abraham, know, we have two singers Abraham on the Silver. panel here. We'll yeah, be Abraham lucky if we... Silver was my teacher. He allowed me Henry Ford Auditorium doing box aria. And that wow. was my debut. 4,500 people. Then I got I got bit by the bug. I yeah. wanted to be in show business. <laughs> right. Uh, so tell me how you. I mean, you you defined Motown, of course, and 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 how did you get from from where you were to there? Just uh, having the skills. Yeah. I had been trained in high school to yeah. sing. So I went there already full of the knowledge of singing. Right. Plus, I also used to to the radio while I washed the dishes in my house because <laughs> I'm a family of 11 children. Right. Dad worked for the city of Detroit, so I'd sing to opera as I washed dishes. <laughs> Those are great. <laughs> so stories. I had classical roots. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, and these are the stories people can hear in the yes. in the history maker. So uh, it's really great to have you guys here. Thank you very much. Thank you for, for inviting me today. Thank you. Thank Steve. you, Steve.